Wouldn't it be great if you could go into the tackle shop and buy Warcraft off the shelf? But you can't, can you? So join me for 48 hours, me and a carp dog, we're going to talk about Warcraft, how to hone your Warcraft skills, hopefully put more fish on the bank for you. Welcome to this week's vlog. <laughs> If you've just come across this channel and you like these type of videos, then you may want to think about subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, then don't forget to hit that bell icon and you'll never miss another video. So, we're at the park lake, 48 hours, and we're going to base this all around this 48 hours with me and a carp dog about watercraft. So what is watercraft? Now to me, it sort of gives it away in the name, watercraft. It, water, you know, fishing, we fish in water, don't we? But it's the craft bit, you know, it's something you nurture, it's something you gain, the knowledge you gain. It's like riding a bike, you're not great at it, first of all, are you? But with practice and knowing how to ride that bike, you get better and better at it. And that is the essence of watercraft. The more you go fishing, the more you put what I'm going to tell you into practice, the more you will have the chance to catch fish. So the watercraft for me, it starts a couple of days before I'm even thinking about getting down the lake. I always look at the weather conditions two days before. It might be a howling northerly wind, freezing cold, and then suddenly when I'm going to get down, it's going to change to a southwesterly warm. Or it might have been blowing northerly and it's going to continue blowing northerly. So you've got to take all these things into consideration. And the more you look at it, the more you do it, the more you get down and nurture your watercraft, not on specifically on the lake you're fishing but all lakes you're getting the habit of looking for the weather looking at what's happening reading the lake trying to read the lake and making a decision on when you arrive never make a decision prior to getting there no matter what the weather says have some idea of what could be happening or what the fish could be doing so you can make a decision on where you want to be but there might be someone in that area. They might be all full up that area. The fish might not be there. They might be on the back of the wind. Or they might be on the wind. You know, never make any preconceptions. Always decide on what you see. And watercraft to me is using these, using these, and putting it all in your brain and generating decision on what you're gonna do. And it just doesn't end before you get there and when you get there. It's a constant process all the time you're there. You're always evaluating what's happening at the lake. So, check the weather. The more times you go to that lake, the more you can build up a picture of what the fish are gonna be doing. Build up that picture, write it down. You know, it gives you that bigger picture of what the fish are gonna do. So that's the first thing I'd say. Second one is, arrive at the lake when you think the fish are going to be most active over a 24 hour period if you can if you can only get there at five o'clock after work or whatever then keep your eyes open and the more times you go out that lake the more times you're going to realize when the fish are at their most active so it could be first thing in the morning first light get up a first light and look watch in the area you are and other areas it might even mean reeling in if nothing's showing in your area and walking up the other end of the lake with a bucket. They will show themselves or give you signs of cruising around or bubbling or doing something where you can make an informed decision. Well, do I stay where I am? Do I move? Or if you're turning up like me with the kit and with the carp dog at the lake, it'll give you options. So what am I doing? I've turned up, I've looked at the weather. It's gonna sort of blow down this way for the next couple of days. And it's been blowing this way for the last couple of days. So what am I gonna do? Turned up, got all my kit, me and the carp dog, all loaded up, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna look and watch. I mean, I'm in no rush to set up. I wanna be on fish. And if I don't see fish, I've gotta make an informed decision on the trips before, the weather conditions, where the other anglers are, and what I believe the fish are gonna be doing. If I don't see anything, I've gotta make that decision. But the good thing is, from the knowledge I've gained from trips before on this lake, the decision process gets easier. Believe me, it gets easier. 
the more you do this, the more you go through this process, the easier it will get. And then what you can do is you can take that to any lake that you go to. Look on the wind, look in the snags, you know, polarized, got to get a pair of those, climb up a tree, look, 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 look. The fish will give themselves away at some point. Or, as I said, you can make an informed decision on where you should go. So I'm going to continue walking around, me and him, look in, see what's happened. It's about six o'clock now, we've got about three hours till dark. And as I say, I'm in no rush to get the rods out. I want to be on fish, or think I'm on fish. It's that confidence thing. If you see fish in an area and you're fishing on them, confidence is high. If you think the fish are in the area, confidence is high. But keep on evaluating if you need to move or reposition your baits or pack up and go home. If you think it's not going to happen, what's the point of being there? Right, I'm going to keep on looking, keep on searching, see what happens. We'll catch up soon. It's been about an hour sitting here watching, not seeing a great deal. Plenty of roach. So what we're going to do is, we're going to have a little walk up the bank to get a better vantage point for some more of the water. Now, seven o'clock, still a couple of hours before dark, plenty of time to get on the fish. We're going to have a little uh, wander and see what we can see. Okay, we've had a walk round, still not seeing nothing. But we've ended up here, because this gives us a real wide area, a bit more of an angle to be able to see around the lake. So there is no quick fix to this. There is no instant gratification, unless you see something. You just gotta keep on keeping on, looking and watching and listening. Build up that knowledge about the lake that you're fishing. Look, he's gone up there, look. Look, look. Come back here. Come on. He's doing his own investigating, he is. So. All we can do is just keep watching, keep looking, you know, and, until we see something that makes us wanna get the rods out. Good thing is though, it gets easier. The more you fish a particular lake, the more you get in tune with it, the more you enhance your watercraft, the more you learn about the fish, the patrol routes, what they do in certain weather conditions, just take note of it all. So then, when nothing's happening like this, you can make an informed decision on where you think they should be. I mean, this is only my third time on this lake, and every time we're down, I've seen fish down this corner, down this sort of end. And it's always been either first thing in the morning or last thing at night. Hence why I've turned up three hours before darkness. You know, I could have turned up all day and been looking round and not seen nothing. I mean, that may change as we get further in the year, fish might be showing and feeding at different times so we adapt our approach but at the moment from what I've seen the last two trips early mornings they show last thing at night they give their presence away of where they are or where they're moving to so I'm going to spend another sort of half an hour hour here and just keep on watching keep on looking to give me that informed decision catch up with you in a minute guys right New update, I've just seen one show out there. Just a little head and shoulder, come up, didn't disturb the water hardly, just through perseverance of watching for the last two hours, we've seen one. They always show themselves at some time over the 24 or 48 hour period. You've just got to be relentless in looking, whether it be bubblers, whether it be as blatant as that, as a fish showing. You know, you might be up a tree with your Polaroids on, looking down and you see a couple of fish on an area or a spot. You know, it can be as easy as that, but you just got to be relentless, build up that water craft. So that's a real good sign. And it's right in front of that other swim where I've left my gear. So, let's keep watching. That's a good sign. I'm going to go back to the other area, probably set up there, I've seen one. Keep watching though, keep looking. Catch you in a minute. It's about phew, nine o'clock. We're all sorted. Managed to get all three rods out. Couple of casts each. Single little baits just for tonight. Place is an absolute tip. Look at that, look. He's in there. Look at him. The old carp dog, he's in there, bless him. But we're on the money. We've seen one. I haven't seen any more since I've set it up. Sat for about another half an hour, see a couple of bubbles that could have been fish, 
So, first night in of a 48, we're still taking in everything around us. So, we're gonna watch tonight, we're gonna stay up quite late, we're gonna get up early and see if any shows or if I hear anything, um, because I may move. All to play for, baits are on the dance floor, and that's all we can hope for. We found a fish. <laughs> There's got to be others there, surely. But, there we go. Let's see what happens tonight. Work out the best time for when you're gonna see the fish. Whether you're just getting down, you're gonna move on to the fish, set up on them, or you're down already. You need to be getting up early just to see where these fish are to get onto them. It's a must, believe me. Really is, look at that, look. Look at that for a sunrise. Look at the colors out there, look. Unbelievable, isn't it? Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. So, I'm gonna get the kettle on and keep watching. Now, this morning was pretty uneventful. No liners, nothing moving about. I did see one fish right up the other end of the lake, about as far away from me as possible. This is crunch time, it's about 10 o'clock. I've got about 24 hours left. I haven't seen nothing. So now I'll be thinking definitely about a move. Even with this wind pushing in, looks beautiful. I'm sure I would have had one or seen one. But then what happens is a couple of hours ago, the guy opposite, there is he, over there. He had a bite and lost one. So sometimes you don't have to see them for them to be here, to be in front of you. That's where your experience comes in, how you've built your walk craft over the years. You know, I've got a feeling they're, they're here or there's a, a limited a number of fish here. It confirmed it that with him having that bite this morning. So still, because I've seen one up the other end, and they're not jumping out like cows down here. I'm gonna reel in, in the next half an hour. Me and the old fluffy one, Barney the carp dog, we're gonna take a walk around the lake on our rounds and see if we can see any fish anywhere. Replenish the stocks, use the old glasses, get up a few trees, look in the water, see if we can find a group of fish. But still, this is drawing me to here from previous experiences on other waters and the last two trips that this is a warm wind push, pushing in. It looks spot on, he's lost one. I see one yesterday, straight out in front of here. So I'm still gonna go and look though. That's what I'm gonna do, reel in, go and look around the rest of the lake, rest the swim with the rods, see what happens. Well, we're back from having a good walk round. Didn't see a dicky bird, nothing at all. Me and the carp dog walked all the way around the lake, looked in all the snags and everything else. Didn't see nothing. No fish showed, nothing at all. Also, we spoke to quite a few of the anglers already on, and they haven't seen anything either. No fish anywhere. Only that fish I saw yesterday out here, and the guy opposite who's lost one. So, just got the rods all bagged out, ready for the evening, ready for the night. And that's all we can do. There's no point moving if one, your gut instinct doesn't tell you to move, or two, you don't see anything. You know, that's, that's how you're gonna build your walk craft as well. You know, by walking around, looking up trees, looking for stuff, and going on what you've seen already. And look at this wind, it is pumping in here. You know, my, my gut instinct is telling me that the fish have got to be here. They've got to be here. You know, hopefully we'll see them tonight, in the morning, before we pack up and go home. But that's all you can do. Sometimes, when the fish aren't showing, you just gotta go on what you know already, or what's happened in previous trips. Sometimes they just don't feed. They just don't wanna know. So he's in there. He's, look, look at that, look. You just see a little, little, look at him, look. Look, a little paw or something in there, look. What's this? A little head, look. Look at him, look. Look at him looking into the camera, look. He's loving it in there, isn't he? All snuggle-buggled up, he's had his little walk. 
he had a bit of a bark, saw a few people, and now he's all snuggled up, tucking himself back in now, putting the cover over him. So that's where we're at, mid-afternoon, four or five o'clock, I'm expecting to see fish in the next couple of hours. Let's hope so anyway, that's all we can do. Right, little update for you, it's 10 to 10 at night, sun's gone down, another half an hour it'll be pitch black. Now I'm out here, watching, looking, listening, and I've just seen one poke his head out. If I wasn't watching, then I wouldn't have seen it. Out there, look. Seen one out here. Just poked its head out. Just a quick head and shoulder. Hardly moved any water. Definitely a carp. So that's what you've got to do. Dusk and dawn are some of the best times to see anything moving. So what that's done is that's verified what I thought my gut feeling was my watercraft spot on. And what that's done is seeing that fish has given me even more confidence that I'm in the right spot. So, all to play for. I might not get a bite, I might not catch nothing, but I'm confident I'm in the right area and my watercraft skills are spot on. So let's see what happens, guys. I'm gonna keep on watching, keep on listening, keep on looking. Morning, very, very quiet night. See that one fish just before dark? That was it, I stayed up for another couple of hours to about midnight. Didn't see a great deal, well, no carp in fact, just that one, that was it. Me and him got all snuggled up, up at five this morning looking and looking and looking but still haven't seen a dicky bird anywhere over the lake nowhere at all it's really really quiet you know there was no point moving yesterday because i see fish out here and the guy across he lost one so there were different fish about they just weren't feeding sometimes it's just like that isn't it so what have we learned to improve our watercraft from this session what was our takeaways that we can build on the next time we go fishing, whatever lake it is, whether it's this one or another lake. First of all, do a little bit of homework on the weather a couple of days before you get down. Um, and go on past experiences as well, what the weather's done, where the fish have been caught from, where you've caught them from. So you can build up a picture before you get down, not on where you've got to be, but where the fish might be. So then when you get down, you've got a rough idea you're building up that picture all the time. So you make an informed decision on where the fish may be. When you get down, try and get down as early as possible to first light, or just before dark, or if you know the lake a little bit better, when you have seen or feel that the fish are gonna show themselves, give their presence away more readily. Have a good walk round, watch, listen, and try and figure out where the fish are, because it's not easy unless you're on a very prolific lake, it all helps go towards improving your watercraft for each, each trip. The good thing about this is that the more you do it, the more you get used to it, the more you hone your watercraft capabilities. So it does get easier guys, it really does. And you can take that to any lake, build up a picture of the lake that you're on or concentrating on, and this works winter, spring, summer, any time of year. So it's time for me to pack up, I've got to pack up, get home, me and him, look, here he is, here he is, me and him, going to have a slow pack up, but go home in a couple of hours, don't forget, if you like these videos guys and you want to see more of them, it may be worth you subscribing, hit that subscription button and don't forget, hit the bell icon and then you'll never miss another video, see you soon.